this, then let's just do a, a short sequence of movement that you can do at your desk. And this is really, really key. It could really help save your back and your neck and your shoulders uh, from spending hours and hours of in the, uh, a constant forward bend, which is all, not all that great for the spine uh, in so many regards. So setting uh, at the edge of your chair. So you want to have a sense, turn this sideways, that you're sitting right at the edge of your chair with your sitting bones kind of up on the edge of it. And just to allow you to sit up tall and have a little sense of being able to draw the low back in and out. So if your desk chair doesn't allow you to do this, you can maybe find a folding chair in your office or something that you can work with that will allow you to sit tall and have a harder surface to sit on. So sitting with your knees bent about 90 degrees, take your hands to your knees. And then from here, we'll do a little seated cat and cow. So on your exhale, just hold on to your knees and let yourself slouch. So just round the back, drop your chin. Inhale, bring your heart forward, roll your shoulders back. Lift your gaze a little bit. Think about lifting the heart as your low back draws in and up. Exhale and round. Inhale forward. Shoulders back, low back, in and up. Exhale and round. So let your arms completely straighten. Let your back move back toward the back of the chair. So you're holding on to your knees so that you don't fall backwards, right? So your arms completely straighten. You inhale and come back up. So do that as many times as you want. You know, it just feels great. Roll the shoulders back. Work the upper back a little bit, right? Ugh. Now we're gonna open the pecs maybe a little bit, take your hands behind you. If you've got, hopefully you've got space here. And then roll your shoulders back. Maybe your hands lift a little bit away from your chair, chair back. So sitting tall. And then we're gonna release that. And then from straight on, still seated, take your left arm up and keep your left sitting bone rooted down, get tall first and press it over to the right. So try to keep your heart lifted, your knees and hips square right in front of you. Oh yeah, and then come on up, switch sides. Right arm up, reach to the left, keep your right sitting bone rooted on your chair. Come on up, other side, and reach over to the right. Try not to let yourself go into a forward bend here. See if you can remain tall as if you were leaning back against a wall. And, oh, and then come on up, and other way, reaching up, and over to the left, so strong. Good, and then come back to center. All right, so now we're gonna twist spirally. So you're gonna take your left hand to your right knee, your right hand back behind you. Note that your right hand can go on your seat, on the seat of your chair, or it can go on your chair back. If you have it on the chair back, you want to avoid allowing the shoulder to lift up on you, right? So you don't want to find yourself in this position. You want the elbow to be almost looking down, head of the arm bone rooting back as you hold the chair, right? So you get a sense that your shoulders are actually still level with one another as you turn. Now, if that just doesn't work with your hand on the chair back, then your hand comes to the, comes to the seat behind you, or it comes back near to your sacrum, right? So try to keep your knees and hips facing forward. Hand comes to the outer knee. Lift and roll the shoulders back. Take an inhale. And exhale and twist. Heart to the right. So sitting tall. As you twist, think about the shoulder blades just moving gently away from your ears. Inhale, come back to center and switch sides. Inhale, back to center. Do it again to the right. Inhale, back to center. And again to the left. So as you twist, think about the spine getting taller. If there's a pressure down into your chair seat, compress down with your sitting bones, and think about getting taller through the crown of your head as your heart try tries to just twist a little bit. Don't worry about trying to turn your head too much. Right, so there's a lot that can go on in the shoulder that can affect how your neck feels. 
So you want to make sure the head of the arm bone is back if you're twisting to the left on the left side, twisting to the right on the right side, and then your head only turns as far as it feels appropriate for you, and then come back to center. All right, so now we've basically moved your spine in all the six directions that it'll twist. Now from here, we've got the, the upper body kind of set and released a little bit. We're going to take your left heel forward, so just slide it forward like you're going to do kind of a runner's lunge from here, and then come forward. Now, we're all in a different place as far as how the hamstrings feel. Press your heel down into the floor. Press forward on the gas pedal with the mound of your left big toe, and then hug your toes back towards yourself. So you get a lot of engagement. Your calf muscles are engaged. Your thigh muscles are engaged. And you're going to just tilt your spine forward at a gentle angle. A nice, gentle, lengthy rounding of the back is fine. You just don't want to have a sense that your pelvis is moving back and your spine is folding in on itself. Right? So we want to keep the low back drawing in and up so that your pelvis comes with you as you come forward. And then maybe there's a little gentle rounding of the back. Right? Here's the deal too. Don't feel like you have to come forward. If this right here is plenty of stretch for your hamstrings, great. Then that's where you go. Right? And then the other side. So sliding the heel forward engaging the leg fully, so you press down into the heel, press forward on the gas pedal, thigh muscles strong, and then maybe you come forward and lean, right? But again, with a long spine. So rather than letting your pelvis round back, you're drawing it in. You're still keeping some length as you come forward. And come back, and you may want to do that again. Press the left heel forward, come forward towards your legs. One more time, other side. And come up to center. All right, so this is, I think, one of the key things to, that, that can really help uh, with hips when, you're, when you sit for long periods of time. So cross your right ankle over your left knee. Now, a lot of us, this is maybe going to be more challenging. You're going to be maybe more in a shape, a little bit more like this. And as you take the leg up there, the back may want to round, depending on the tightness of your hip. So you're going to do your best, see where you end up here. And again, it may be that this knee ends up being up. Then you want to take your hands maybe behind you on your seat chair. Try to make your foot square to your shin. So the, the rather than having this kind of thing, where this leg ends up going out and the foot ends up looking more up, right? Or even, even if you have a tight hip and your knee won't go down, but you can't get your foot past here, you don't want your foot to sickle. You want your foot to be positioned so that you feel like you're pressing the outer edge of your foot toward the floor. You're pressing some energy out through the mound of your big toe. You're going to sit up tall here and then just, you know, just see how it goes. You don't ever want to use your hand to press any of your joints down toward the floor. So I'm never going to use my hand to press my knee down here. I'm just going to sit. Other hand is just going to rest at the thigh. Now, coming forward only if that feels appropriate for your body. My hips may not be the same as yours. If your knee is way up here, then coming forward may, may be not an option. You're in flexion already. You're in a forward fold. Don't feel like you have to bring your body forward to get something out of it. You might already be having plenty of sensation in your right hip. So just work right where you are. For me, I can come forward. You, again, you go where you're going to go. Maybe you stay upright and you're just trying to energetically move the leg toward the floor, keeping your foot active. Right? And then we'll switch sides. Now here's the thing too. You may have your right side and left side are completely different from one another. This is not unusual. You know, your, our bodies, by the time we've got a few years on us, we, they have stories to tell, and so we just we, we got what we got. So on this side, this this hip or this knee is a little bit more lifted. I'm going to keep this foot nice and engaged, and then come forward. So I have to spread my toes a lot to keep my knee engaged and in safe alignment as I come forward so that the stretch stays in my hip and not around my knee. I'm going to come on back up. And you may do the same thing again. So I hope 
breathe. Whatever amount of sensation you have there. You know, if you have a desk out in front of you, even, I mean, just put your hands on your desk as you come forward. Just give yourself some support there. Good. All right. And then the, the final thing to do here is get up. Get up and out of your chair. Walk around your, your office a little bit. Go get a drink of water, whatever you're going to do. And uh, hopefully, if you can do this a number of times throughout your day, it's great. Definitely get up and move around every hour if you can. So set a timer on your clock, on your watch, on your computer, whatever, and try to get yourself up and moving so that you're not allowing energy to just kind of be like sediment that ends up sitting in your hips and in your back and in your shoulders. And you get what I mean, right? So uh, end up sitting there for miles forever. All right, so thanks. I hope this helps.